ever been. And the, in some ways, the pandemic helped to increase sequencing capacity. Um, oh yeah, That's a good point. Let's uh, let's see where we're at in a little bit. We need to make some upslope movement. Um, but se zoom. sequencing. It's a, nice, it's a nice view in the still cam. Yep. Sequencing capacity is a lot um, greater and costs are a lot cheaper. And uh, with the pandemic and the prevalence of PCR-based tests uh, for testing for COVID, I predict that the ability and uh, cost of sequencing is going to drop dramatically. Um, it already has actually, but uh, even further in the coming years. Yeah, oh, I remember nice you told video. me about that the other night. That was really, really interesting. No, I mean routinely. If you go to um, some doctors' offices now, they they are, you know try to uh, do genomic screening and genomic medicine, and it's it's in practice. Yeah. Um, so it's a revolution we're going through right now in how we look at both ourselves and our environment. Uh, somebody online is wanting to know if we keep a sample for a personal souvenir. And the answer is no, 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 we do not. Um, so we have very, very specialized permits um, that allow us to do these types of uh, sampling and collecting. So uh, it needs to fit the objective of the expedition. So yeah, keeping a personal sample or a souvenir is uh, definitely frowned upon. And yes, we are using ROVs in order to conduct these dives. ROV means remotely operated vehicle. So there is not a single person that is inside of those machines that are way, way, way down there exploring the ocean floor, which currently the depth is 2,249 meters. So in order to maneuver those ROVs, we do have two pilots that are here in the control van. So we have Gabby as well as Karen, and they have a system here in this room where they, where they are able to control and maneuver the ROVs from the ship. So nobody is inside of the water right now. And we need the navigator too. The vehicles don't go anywhere without the navigator. Okay, and the navigator. Too kind. What's that? You're too kind. <laughs> we would be sitting here looking at this rock all night. <laughs> <laughs> the geologist might enjoy that. The, yeah, the geologist. Oh, he's is like, gone, so we can say whatever we want. <laughs> Yeah, so again, this is the final dive of this expedition, um, looking at the area surrounding Johnston Atoll. So this dive is going to conclude NA-153. <sighs> so somebody is wondering, what do we do afterwards? And when does the expedition itself end? Um, yeah, what do we do afterwards? I don't know. It's gonna be so weird going back home. Um, but I'm gonna go back to working at the California Science Center in Los Angeles, working there as a senior educator. Um, I don't know if anyone else has other plans, like if you're just gonna maybe vacation or something before you go back, or if you have... What, what, what is that? What is that thing you're talking about? Vacation? Yeah, <laughs> sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> sounds nice. <laughs> I'm going camping with my family on an annual trip that we do every year to Lassen uh, Volcanic National Park. That's to awesome. where? Lassen Volcanic National Where's Park. Where's that? It's Northern California. Cool. There's uh, the whole park is in the um, basically inside the crater of a, a extinct supervolcano, um, and what? there's currently an active or a, a no longer active 
uh, volcano Lassen Peak. Its last eruption was in 1914, I want to say, um, or 1906, early 1900s. Uh -huh. uh, there's geothermal Go features. There's uh, like mud pots. There's uh, sulfur plumes coming out of the ground. It's it's a really interesting active uh, area. A polynoid polychaete, maybe. Is that the same one we saw earlier in the dive? It's the same one. It's Fred. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah same, 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 exact, <laughs> same exact. Yeah, I wish. Uh, it's, it's like impossible to tell polychaetes to species on the seafloor. Even even genus is impossible. Um, so much of the taxonomy and characters you need to identify for polychaetes is um, in their head region and, uh, and specifically their jaws. Um, so it's... it's it's pretty much, yeah, useless to, <laughs> to 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 try and identify it. It, will, it probably will be very different from what you suspect on the seafloor. They're definitely friends, though, right? Huh? I said those those polychaetes are definitely friends, though, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. They live practically in the same neighborhood. <laughs> Let us neighbors have this too. <laughs> Let me have this one. <laughs> What? Just one. Everyone's friends, John. You know what I'm Crabs go to school. They have backpacks. Everyone's a friend. Yeah, that's the Disney version. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you think about it, oh wow, that's super tiny. Uh, yeah. Cup coral. That one's alive though. Super tiny. Yeah, it's important to know that um, most of the things that live down here. Go for zoom. Oh, there it is. Speaking of. Whoa. Nice. Most of the things. What? What is that? Any guesses? You want to play a game? <laughs> Holotherian? Yeah. Holotherian. Sea cucumber. Sea cucumber. That was my guess, but I yeah. don't think that we've seen any this. This is so spiky. Yeah, so, so spiky, spiky looking. Looks like it's halfway yeah. to a sea pig. Yeah, they're, yeah they're, it's um, probably is. Um, Actually, yeah, it's two feet are quite okay, go wide. robust. <laughs> so this this looks like it could be in the genus Oneira Fanta, uh, which is, I guess, you know, if you consider any, any, um, Sea cucumber with those modified tube feet that into that turn into walking legs as a, a sea pig. I guess this could be uh, considered that, but it's actually in the family Di Dimatidae, um, and it's one of the few we've seen. We actually collected a couple of uh, Anerophanta last year um, while we were studying food web dynamics. Uh, one of our scientists on the ship was studying food web, food web dynamics in, in the deep sea in these areas. Cool. So yeah, we I collected them and, and dissected out the gut materials for you know, um, isotope analysis. Bridge now. I love how um, iridescent that one looked. It's really, really Could pretty. Could we add another three zero meters, two eight zero? I see a rock. It's a big one. We could uh, probably pick it up. Uh, let's, let's, let's <laughs> can, can we um, let's finish this move and see where we're at? Okay. Um, because we we're contemplating a scoop for a while too. Oh. Um, well, I just put in a move for 30 meters. Yeah. No, I, that's why I said we'll, we'll finish the move. Okay. And um, and then so see where we're at. Karen made the scoop infinitely better, and then oh, hasn't really? had it. She spent a whole watch doing it, and wow. hasn't had a chance to use it yet. So this is the moment we've been waiting for. All right. <laughs> Hopefully, this move puts us in a nice, uh, a scoopy spot. Sco scoopable spot. No yep. pressure. The world is watching this. <laughs> <laughs> the I think the at world. least my sister is watching, and maybe Samantha's parents. watching a scoop. Yeah. Scoop 2.0. My 0. sister and Kellen. 
Do you know how many versions of scoops have been used on Hercules? Oh my gosh. How we many? had like at least five just We've in the shop right now. We've got to have a hall of fame of I scoops. I love the milk jug. The milk jug scoop. Milk jug scoop. Uh, ice. Ice. Uh, ice scoop. Ice um, shovel mm. scoop. I don't. The ice shovel scoop is my absolute least favorite. <laughs> that scoop is not my thing. I, I like the plastic scoop um, because we put like the, the nuts on the bottom of it and it weights down the bottom. So even if you drop it, it drops the right way up. It's yes. a fantastic scoop. Right. And it's like a little, it requires a little artistry because you have to keep it the right way up the whole time. I was going to say they, they usually have artistry because faces yeah. get drawn on them, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mouths. My brother Brian wants to know, hi Brian, uh, have I seen, have I personally seen any whales while on my journey? <laughs> no, I haven't seen a single whale. I've been looking, <laughs> I've been out here for a month and I haven't seen a whale. Um, it's gonna happen. I don't know. It'll happen on the way back. I don't know. I'm slowly losing hope. We saw dolphins. That's true. Yeah, I guess technically yeah, dolphins whale. are whales, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. I saw that really cool Cetaceans. sea turtle. Sea turtles are also very cool. They are not whales. <laughs> They're not whales. But those, yeah, we saw. Still not a whale. We saw two sea turtles <laughs> and um, a small pod of dolphin, dolphin as we were leaving Oahu to come out on this journey. Yep. That was the very first day on August second, and since then, <laughs> zero whales. Still no whales. It's, well, it's fine. I'm fine. Say. Everything's fine. Since then, we've also been <laughs> playing the whale deterrent song the entire way. The whale deterrent Black song. Coral. <laughs> yeah, black coral. So th this one has been collected in the past uh, extensively in this area. We think it's Heteropathies, possibly Heteropathies Pacifica, uh, but we've collected it. Um, and we're okay. hopefully someone's going to work on it one day. Samantha, going back to your vacation time, people are very, very curious about, uh, what is it, Lassen? Lassen. Yeah, so are you actually going to hike there, or how long are you going to be there? What are you going to do? Yeah, we'll be there for like zoom? five, six days, I think. Um, there are amazing hikes. You can hike Lassen Peak. Um, that one's generally recommended to like start in the early morning, because um, it's completely exposed okay. as a... Branch bamboo. Uh, there's there's no there's not a lot of tree growth on it, um, so it's it's pretty exposed. Um, there's often uh, snow at the peak. Um, it's 12,000 feet uh, at the summit. Um, there's lakes. There are uh, there's a cinder cone of um, oh wow my geology is failing me this morning. But um, <laughs> <Rocks>. <laughs> cinder cone yeah rocks. made of made of uh, volcanic chunks. Obsidian? Like a, they basically, you're doing two steps up, one step down. Um, there are, yeah, there's there's geothermal fields that you can walk around um, on boardwalks. Uh, there's a, there are whole areas that were covered by lava flow in the early 1900s and now have very small stunted pine trees growing out of them, oh, which is cool. kind of incredible. That's yeah. awesome. So it's really, um, since I started. Uh, on Nautilus and seeing more of the deep sea and like hydrothermal vent features, I think about the kind of analogs on land quite a lot now. Mm -hmm. I think about how it's very similar down here. So basically what you're describing is an amusement park for rocks. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, so my grandfather was a geologist and my mom spent every summer of her childhood growing up there. Um, uh, he was a geologist and a park ranger at Lassen. And so my mom spent every summer there and I've spent every summer there. Nice. Um, and it's a it's a huge park, um, and not not super well known, but is becoming more well known. Um, but yeah, really really incredible, diverse uh, geological and geothermal you. features there. Nice, would recommend. Uh, and the season's really short; it's like May to September, um, and then oh, the park usually okay. closes for snow. I imagine an amazing place for stars too, right? Great stars. Yeah, it's actually one of the um, 
uh, dark sky parks. Is that what they're called? Mm. There's a. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, there's a program finding yeah, all the yeah, darkest yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get like internationally in classed yeah. as having like a suitably dark sky. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. I had never heard of that. Yeah. Hmm. Dark sky park. Something like that. Yeah. One side of the park also has hot springs that you can actually go in as well. Yeah, it's got it all. <laughs> Although Sounds that part amazing. might have been closed in the last uh, really fire, the, uh, the Dixie fire, I think, 2020. Mm. OK, another move. Oh, no, we're at the end of the move. Uh, science, rock and or scoop. Uh, yeah, can we? scan around we'll for a more substantial rock. nuggets area. Okay, so we got these nuggets right here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and also we have a little bit of time for uh, the vehicle to settle out too. Okay, yep. Nuggets, nuggets. No rush. Hello to our viewer from Norway. You're wondering when is this dive scheduled to uh, conclude? So we're looking at 8 o'clock a.m. Um, Hawaiian Standard Time. But uh, depending on conditions, it may or may not be pushed back a little bit. So a couple hours later. But so yes, unfortunately, this is the final dive here. I think they're loose? Yeah, I think they are loose. We can we can go poke at them. Give them yeah. the poke of science. <laughs> poke those nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're so weird. <laughs> Did you say we are so weird? Yeah. <laughs> so? It's the best thing. <laughs> In the best possible way. We're also so tired. That's very <laughs> true. Weird and tired is an interesting mix. <laughs> it's an amazing combo. Speaking of which, we haven't had any... Uh, actually, go ahead, Steve. No, I'm just wondering if that's a cause and effect or if it's, you know, can be both <laughs> true. Okay. You haven't had any what? I, uh, I've been sitting on this one. What's yeah. the most dangerous type oh. of canoes? There it is. <laughs> the uh, most dangerous type of canoe? Yeah. Uh, like the thing you paddle? Yeah. There's no dangerous uh, canoes. Fall canoes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is that? Uh, I don't know. Volca it. Volcanoes, oh. volcanoes. It's better spelled, I know, I know. <laughs> Can, uh, oh, okay. I like Steve's reaction more than the joke itself. <laughs> um, okay. If it's possible, just, just so we know, <laughs> we can definitely fit the scoop in, uh, in the starboard box. Can we scoop first? Yes. Before we rock it? I got Smith, that's and all that matters. That'll tell us how <laughs> big of a rock we can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, good idea. Well, good Smith is. is broken. Somebody repair the oh, navigator. She's actually like cry laughing. <laughs> okay, cool. Somebody repair the navigator. Uh, love it. Leave me here. <laughs> <laughs> actually, this is a fine place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, we're set up well. Like, I think you're good. <laughs> that joke still going. <laughs> what? Well done, Logan. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Is that an original uh, <laughs> creation? <laughs> Volcano. <laughs> Volcano. Yeah, we were That's talking about dad jokes, jokes last night, so I had to. <laughs> I was I was sitting thinking about that as I was going to bed. I was like, what's a good one for Nick? Yes. <laughs> Original recipe. Nice. I like it. Oh, Thank you. Yeah, I got you. <sighs> Brittany had one I really liked last night. Oh, yes, I did. It's a um, kind of a generational joke. But it yeah. is. Yeah, if you're, a, if you're an 80s or 90s kid, you'll get it. Hopefully. All right, ready? Ready? Okay. And this comes from my friend Miguel at the Natural History Museum. I have to give him credit. All right. What is the area code for Beverly Hills? 
90210. 90210. 90210. 90210. <laughs> Not the area code, the zip code. What's the zip code for... Dawson's Creek. I don't know. 90108. Still good. It's still good. That is funny. It turns out there's an actual Dawson Creek in British Columbia. Hmm. Really? It's place. Yeah, it's called it's actually called Dawson Creek if you want to split hairs, but I loved that that was real. I hope they're getting royalties. <laughs> I hope so, too. Does the song play into your head as soon as you walk into the town? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Where is it coming from? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. If you want me to reposition, I don't really can. Um, I think it's good. Someone online is saying being out at sea so long is causing beginning stages of delirium. Oh, fully. I yeah. agree. That happened weeks ago. This is more of the end stages yeah. of delirium. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Acceptance and resignation. We've been here. We're not even on a ship anymore. We're just <laughs> alternate. On a journey. <laughs> Some alternate plane of reality. Uh. Thanks for coming along on the ride, everyone online. This is been great. Nick, I haven't had the chance to cut a nugget yet. Can I can I try one of those? Yeah, if you're up for it, yeah. Excellent. Just gotta watch your fingers. <laughs> Be mindful. Okay. Yeah, you and uh, Samantha are neck and neck for uh, for most rocks cut, other than myself. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't been keeping tally, but you both cut quite a few. Who'd have thunk? Yeah. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? Me cutting rocks and actually, like, <laughs> being interested and enjoying it? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> wow, that was a, back, a backhanded <laughs> compliment. <there. laughs> Me I, I, liking I, rocks? <laughs> Those compliment. old things. It was a it was a transformation. It was. From the beginning I yeah. Of the cruise until now, where you got me. Yeah. That's a good review for geology. <laughs> you too can be obsessed with rocks. <laughs> I have one more. This one's not original, but I think it's great. Wait, was the okay? The Vulcanu was that was that an original one? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> job, Gabby's not sold, but <laughs> <laughs> skeptical Gabby. Not sold on it being original, or not sold on the joke. <laughs> <laughs> not sold on. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I don't know. No comment. <laughs> okay. Fair. Hard sell. Um, I just can't. Uh, what did one not? Um, hold up, hold up, hold up. I gotta make sure I get it right. <laughs> if, if do you also have a notes to argue it? Because I certainly do. Of jokes. Yes. Oh gosh. <laughs> um, what did the nut say when he was chasing the other one? <laughs> Not so fast. Oh, that's good. Uh. I'm a cashew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <I love that>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Important <laughs> something now. Yes. Uh, Back to science. If we Back need to, science. to move to scoop another pile, we can do it in the same sample, uh, like, okay. uh, you know, in the general area. We don't have to limit ourselves to one little pile of nuggets. I feel like if I moved, because you're kind of chasing them across the screen, yeah. if I moved to port, you might be able to get some more. Yeah, if it was a little bit sandier, I could like get under them. Yeah, but, it just but it's like just a thin layer. Yeah. Here, let me try moving back and a little bit to port and see what it gets you. Is this 206 sample? Brown one? 205. Oh, I thought 205 was the rush. There. There's a bamboo. Um, right there, so. Nope. Okay. We didn't, Maybe we didn't collect that rock. Uphill, she picked it up and then put it down. Oh. Right into the scooter. Because we Sounds were going to go you. for okay. the nodule first and then the rock. Let's see what you can make of that. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Oh my gosh. All right. 
Hi, Mrs. Castillo. Thanks for watching. Um, we're getting questions about how long will it take to return uh, home. So for me, I live in LA or around LA, so it's not going to take that long for me to get home. Yeah, I'm trying to think, I think who's so the farthest. I would say probably Gabby, right? Gabby lives in Canada. Yeah, she's in Vancouver. I don't know. We're all West Coast ish. I, I think know, huh? on, on. I know that. Um, on this watch, at least. Steve's Steve, going to New York. Steve's oh my gosh. Oh, Steve's yeah. going to New York. Oh, yeah. Only, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm the only right coaster. <laughs> right coaster. <laughs> I know that Remy, when, <laughs> when, when Remy came to the ship, he came from. Uh, Kenya. Kenya. Yeah, so that was a long trek. I'm going a grand total of 20 minute plane ride home. <laughs> nice. Hop, skip, and a jump. Yeah. Nice. So this is a really, really awesome, lovely uh, comment. You've asked chat for highlights. Yeah. Over the last 30 dives I've watched in the last two and a half years on Nautilus, the best has been all of your fantastic, your all of you fantastic people in the van. Oh. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't see this fantastic world. Thank you all from Australia. Thanks, Australia. Aww. Let's try one more. If we get one more scoop, one more nugget, that that'll be fine. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Deck Frog seems a little unhappy that this is our last dive. Ah, <laughs> oh, Deck Frog. That's, uh, that's ambivalence right there. Yeah. Ambival I can't see Deck Frog from oh where I am. Gosh. Where is Deck Frog? Deck Frog's right there. Oh, yes. But, you know, Deck Frog will be here long after we're gone. And <laughs> we'll see the next dive as well. Deck Frog will remain. H2002. H2002. Long live Deck Frog. Yeah, we'll show you all Deck Frog here in a moment. Yep. Don't don't get too excited. It's it's nothing is amazing. The, is Deck, Deck Frog, Frog is unhappy today? Always amazing. Excuse you. It's a product of boredom. Oh. <laughs> it's funny that I don't know. Uh, most of my career, I've been going to sea and. On very few ships, we haven't had telepresence uh, capabilities. It's just funny to hear about boredom on a ship with full internet access and <laughs> download all your videos. Because uh, back in back in my day, <laughs> when it was really cold outside, we had to watch movies together in one room. Did you have to walk to school uphill both ways? <laughs> yes. Too? Yeah. Walk Through to the, the snow. I walked snow. to the van yeah. uphill both ways. Yeah. <laughs> So they get to work every day. <laughs> no, I mean, um, with very few exceptions, most of the ships that I've been on these days have been telepresence. But, um, for example, some of them have you know, limited how much data you can transfer per day, and most ships are like that. But even up until a few years ago, some sometimes you could only access your email from one computer on a ship. Um, and uh, And everyone had to share that one computer. That's all right. Well, we'll go with that. Nice. We can stow stow that and keep on trucking after we get our rock, right? Are we going to get a rock here? <coughs> uh, Some more we just got F. one about 10 minutes ago. Bigger box. Uh, maybe another. I don't know. Any word yet from... So there's a question about eDNA again. Do we ever try getting eDNA from the soil scoops? Not that I know of from the scoops, but we do have a method with a, it's called a push core. And would that technically be considered eDNA if we're getting it from the sediment? Yeah, that, that would be the way to get it for sure. Uh, Science, how many rocks are you hoping to get here? No, I said that was enough. We can oh, okay, stow it. Great. Yep. I think we have so I think we have like a few, only a few, the first like three or four fell out of a hole in the side, but we've figured yeah. out a way around that now. That's plenty. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, yeah, we, we just need a couple, you know, okay. it's not, it's not a quantitative
of thing. Okay. Starboard right. F, the aft one. Starboard aft, Roger. No worries. Um, but the other eDNA question, yes, we, we can get eDNA from the sediments, but it's not something we preserve here uh, in part because it, you know, we're, we're largely a community, uh, science community driven, um, you know, cruise expedition planning uh, group and we take input from scientists ashore and we haven't yet received any requests as in my recent memory of eDNA samples from sediments for any of the cruises we've done. So it's possible, but it's not part of our standard catalog of uh, sampling processes. Fox. No, that one. Not that one? Yep, that's yeah, one. Oh. Uh, let's see, I think. Do you guys just put like the nozzle or like the scoopy bit in first? Uh, uh, it can go in that other one if you want. I'm just trying to get like that in. It might struggle to fit all the way in something that already has a rock in it. We'll be able to pile rocks on top of it, but the handle wants to stick out the tiniest bit. Just gonna bump the handle in just now. Yeah, absolutely. What was the sample number on that? 205. 205. And another thing, if you can, just uh, scroll high pack a oh, little bit um, further. Did we want to get a rock here? Um, we can. There's a big one right in front of us Let's that grab Karen it. had picked up right of initially. I will not object. Okay. Awesome. Steve, where are you looking for here? Uh, yeah, just just to put like 11 in the view, some, right somewhere in the upper left hand corner. Uh, so not the ones in the lasers just now, not that one. I think that's, w wasn't that the one that you were moving around earlier? Or Yeah. Do we have room for that? Yeah. A little bit larger, that's but. Probably a good 20 centimeters at yeah. least, yeah. Which means if it's 20 centimeters on the seafloor, it'll automatically become 25 centimeters <laughs> on the surface. <laughs> It's the pressure, Steve. Yeah, it's right. It's, <laughs> it's a science. I yeah. thought it was the nucleation yeah. rate. Increases exponentially when you get on land. Decompression. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. That may stay on there. If you can drop it that end up, that would be really nice. Okay. Uh, which box should we put it in? Uh, starboard bow box E, the forward large one. Okay.
Okay, so it's the second one. Hopefully it has that associate yeah. on. Yeah. Because it looks pretty much exactly like the other one. This is 206. Six. Oh, shit. It's okay. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you look at the arm again? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so you got a question about the next expedition, Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Um, is anybody on yeah, this watch or any of the other watches going on that expedition? Uh, uh, no, except for Ren Rennie. Yeah. yeah, just Rennie. Yeah. Rennie just will Rennie. be on as a uh, mapping coordinator again. Excellent. Cruise, so. Yeah, we're having a full science turnover and actually a significant crew turnover as well. So. Okay, um, how are we to keep moving? I wish I was going. We are ready. Okay. You want to get ahead of uh, Atalanta before I'm moving? Or? Uh, I can put it move now. You can probably start Takes the move. Time. Should happen pretty quick. Bridge now? Mm -hmm. It won't happen quick if I keep stick lock on, though. Three zero meters, two eight zero, please. So this comment says, these dyes have been so very interesting and inspiring. Excellent. Uh, when is the next mm -hmm. expedition? Uh, right after this one, pretty much. Um, so we're going to Honolulu. The folks that were here for NA 153 are taking off. And then um, everybody going on for the NA-154 is coming on and leaving pretty much almost immediately after, maybe two or three days after we depart or after we get off the ship um, on the 29th. Yep, port days Another are... Chana cops. Oh, yep, there it is. The adult. Yeah, an adult oh, yeah. Chana cops. Oh, one sec. Go for Zoom. Oh. Too busy for snacks. <laughs> oh, so now see you can see the Sometimes the adults, yeah, the size is deceiving. Sometimes the adults can be quite small too. Yeah. Whoa. I think this is the That's first cool the first adult Chana cops we've seen on this watch since the expedition started. We've yeah. only seen the juveniles. Love it. So, Karen, was the alternation on the scoop the uh, bend in the arm? Say that again. Was the alteration in the scoop the bend in the arm? Um, yeah, it's nice to have it kind of at a 45 so that you don't have to um, have, like, the jaw pitch to be so, like... Extreme. Severe, you know, yeah. yeah so, just making that and then kind of shoring up the... the um, how the handle secures to the scoop bit. I I chose three uh, attachment points to make it just a little bit more secure. Yeah, I saw that. How do, how do you feel like it went? Just that was a hard spot? Say again? How did you feel that, did it go better and that was just a hard spot to scoop from? Um, yeah, so I, I don't love the handle. Um, like it's a little bit limited because um, of the coral snips. So if, the coral snips weren't there, you'd have a more like, you'd have a better grip on the hockey puck. Yeah. Um, so, yes, that's, it's, uh, the sand was also a bit um, a bit hard, so I wasn't really like, whenever you hit something hard with the, with the scoop or with anything in any tool in the jaws, like if it's hard, then it'll just deflect it out of the, out of the jaws if they, if you don't have a very good grip on it. Yeah. You know.
So Gabby and Karen, you're getting a question again about uh, video games and does that play a role in how you are able to pilot the ROVs? So are you experienced video game players or not so much or what's the word? Um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I enjoy a good first person shooter as well as uh, strategy. Um, the classics are also nice, side scrollers. Um, I think definitely it, it helps with your um, hand-eye coordination, spatial awareness. Gabby, which video games are you partial to? Um, I haven't played any video games since like about middle school, <laughs> but I used to play a fair amount of GoldenEye and Perfect Dark. Oh, oh yeah. Um, but GoldenEye. Yeah, as a counterpoint, like I do think playing video games gives you a bit of a boost, maybe. Um, but I think the real, like, the real thing is just, like, is time doing stuff like this. So if that time is spent video gaming, like, that's awesome. Especially if it's a hobby and it's fun for you. Like, um, but if that time is spent, like, just flying ROVs, that can get you there, too. Um, yeah, I, it was a little bit, like, I, I guess I've done a few, like, little flight simulators and stuff, and that helped. Um, and learning how to fly like RC planes helped me with like the way control reversal works, where when you're flying back towards yourself, the controls feel very backwards. Um, but ROVs move slow and they give you time for your brain to adjust. Um, so yeah, it was only maybe initially a little setback to not be, not have played games in like 25 years. By the way, the snack going around is peanuts. But I'm sure everyone noticed that. Excellent. Yeah, I feel very much at home watching you two fly the ROV. Um, I have two older brothers, and I would always watch them play video games because I, I suck at it. Bridge, no? <laughs> so I'm glad that I'm not the one that's uh, piloting. Three, three zero meters to 280. And then somebody is asking specifically about Subnautica. I guess that's a video game. Have either of you ever played it? Uh, I, I don't not. know it. No. It's a great game. So I've heard, yeah, I've heard very positive game. things about it. It honestly kind of, um, it would pair very well with this. You're like a scuba diver and swim under the ocean and go exploring and it's gorgeous. It's one of those like calm adventure experience games where there's not hard objectives and not, I mean, there's there's obviously things for you to do, but it's very like calming and experiential. You just kind of get thrown in and there's beautiful music. Mm. Oh, you know what? I lied. I have played video games since middle school. I played Portal. Oh, oh Portal is great. such a good game. I was mainly because it was so iconic. That so good. I just couldn't not. That's a great game. I love that whole, like, the Half-Life, Alex, and mm -hmm. Portal's such good games. I think those are, like, those are gateway games. Like, Portal is, like, it's so funny and weird and dark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's, like, difficult game, like, game playing mechanics, but there's also good strategy and problem solving, and you don't have to be, I'm not good at game mechanics. Like, I can't move fast and jump fast and run from here to there, like, mm. at all. Um, but you can still get a lot out of the game. So yeah, that's a gateway game. That is, yeah. The Portal's the best. I played a lot of Portal with my brother growing up because you can do the two player and work together and it was amazing. So fun. There's a new game on Steam called Dave the Diver. Dave the Diver. And Dave it's uh, a game where you fish in deep sea explore during the day and you're a uh, manager of a sushi restaurant at night. Oh yes. Iconic. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right, so to everyone ashore and our scientists in science chat, 
Um, we have a small extension to our dive time today. Uh, we'll be extending our dive to be on deck by w no later than 1 p.m. local uh, Hawaiian Standard Time, so that'll give us a few more hours on the seafloor today. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. That means if we're at waypoint <laughs> 10, which will be 20 meters, I can get a I revised uh, off bottom tank. Uh, is that a fan <laughs> call in the back or? 21 meter gate. There's a person in the chat that's uh, a science cucumber. teacher and is yeah. very baffled that we didn't all constantly have our heads in science books. Yep. And then there's a. Uh, we zoom I on this. Yeah, is that black room? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Likely pathy pathies. Um, we'll doing back. some reading? I've been doing some reading on board, yeah. Those good old reverse isochrons always get me. <laughs> yep, me too. Gabby, you've been coming up at 20 meters. What's that? Uh, have you been coming up at 20 meters a minute? I think 23. 23. 22, it depends, I guess it depends on how many plates we pitch and how many rocks we have on board. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so this is a bathypathies with this uh, commensal polychaete worm. You can see right in the center of the middle of the axis. Um, so if this is bathypathies, possibly pseudo alternata, then it's been collected and we also collected the worm earlier in the expedition. And uh, that is useful for diagnostic uh, identification of, of this particular coral species. Thanks. The worm. The worm. The worm, that was the worm and the coral. It just both. like blew everyone's mind, the fact that you were able to see that. Well, it's, it's well known that um, <laughs> there are polychaetes that inhabit the center axis of uh, a lot of different organisms, including coralids, like precious corals, but also black corals. And they have uh, important relationships, and, and in some cases, and some by some taxonomists, there's been a lot of um, inclusion of these um, details as diagnostic characteristics. Because uh, in some species, it's it's very species specific what worms you find and which corals. Like like with other associates, like squat lobsters, for example. Yeah. Am I using? Oh, well, I was going to say our off button time is 11.30, but Dwight's uh, put on the board at 11. So oh. I guess that's, if, if we end up at waypoint 11 and we go up at 22 meters a minute, we'll, we'll be up early. But we can revise that time as we get closer. Yeah, I, th I think he was just using round numbers go for, uh, zoom. for the time. Roger. Logan, I want to know why you can't hear me when I'm muted. Bridge, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Good <laughs> question. There. Don't know. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> There's this really cool a feature called shouting, and if you <laughs> talk loud enough, they can actually hear you through the mute. It's stunning. <laughs> yeah. It's more of an analog feature. <laughs> back, back in our day. <laughs> In our just day, we just, the yeah. <laughs> we just stood, stood behind the pilots and pointed at <laughs> <up> the screen. <laughs> Actually, um, a lot of ROVs uh, don't use headsets and just talk across the van. Wow. I think I think I prefer headsets because like I can direct my conversation at certain people. For better um, or for worse. <laughs> for hey, talk. Samantha, 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 <laughs> why aren't you paying attention to me? Oh, I'm muted. <laughs> yep. There's no force mute though. There's force talk, force listen, no force mute. <laughs> it does get a little complex. For example, when we were uh, working in 2020, when we had the shoreside scientists, and we had like a lot of different side conversations going on at the same time between yeah. the back row and and the shore back row, and then the front row, and yeah, it got a little confusing with V-Link, but um, we made it work. Yeah, I think like. For the front three people, it can be really helpful to have the headsets and just be able to like have the have the co-pilot and the navigator talk about something while the pilot's trying to concentrate or something like that. Yep. 
nav, not have to shout to science to figure out what's coming next. You can shout if you want to, I just want to answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's an analog feature. Oh, oh, oh. another cuke. A cuke. Look at this cute cuke. Go for zoom. This one is not spiky like the last cuke. I took one of my uh, headphones off to engage the analog features, Gabby, so. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> analog. <laughs> Nice. Okay, so. go wide. Sea cucumber. Some kind of cinelactin for sure. Okay. Bye, mom. Bye, dad. Love you. Thanks for watching. Aww. No. Should we revisit deck frog? I was gonna say. Yeah. Deck oh frog. yeah. Are we? Whoa. Are we? No. Are yeah, we? Frog. Is deck yeah. frog on the on the by? Yeah. As the sun rose, we realized deck frog is the worst <laughs> off. Welcome to oh, deck frog is having a rough day. <laughs> That's what I said. You oh no. Yeah. Yikes. We might need a comment box for TJ. How did nobody see that? I you did. Guys, we have so. Oh, okay. Bronwyn did. Yeah. Did you write it in the data log? <laughs> <laughs> I just made it force listen to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> In the midst of a sample collection. <laughs> I don't. TJ is like, TJ, come on. Should we be worried? <laughs> <laughs> I've reported it to him. Okay. <laughs> Poor deck frog, hold on. Hold on tight. It's been reported to the responsible party. Okay, yeah. good. I said hello, I'd like to report a crime. <laughs> 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 Who hurt you, Deck Frog? Who did this to you? Can we spend a minute uh, maybe poking around this rock and looking at some oh, of yeah, the rest of the Deck Frog? Okay. Stop the yeah, ship and we'll get the bridge now. Get everything caught up. I'm, yeah, it, I may. Hold position. Well, let's look. Let's look, look around first. Is there some diversity here that <laughs> we may <laughs> consider sampling? TJ says, uh, paramedics en route. <laughs> <laughs> Deck Frog will be okay. <laughs> we'll check it on Deck Frog again soon. Oh, there he goes. He's going. No <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Switch it back. Switch it back. Yes, TJ. Yes, it. fixing Deck Frog. Oh, he's got a coffee too. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I'm interested in either this that zooming on that with the opioids that you teach it first all is right with the world again <clears throat> well good thing we sorted okay, that out <laughs> Yeah, if you look at, there's a really good photo in the in the Triclops um, still camera that shows this, what a maybe lava tube or bump, whatever mm -hmm. it is in the seafloor. Everything is aligned right on this yeah, uh, like on this feature. Feature, yeah. Yeah, so it just shows you how much just a little bump in topography influences where biolo biology likes to settle. Somebody a while ago was asking about Chanakops again. Um, would they be, would it be possible to keep one as a pet? Ooh, I don't. That would not be recommended. Yeah. I think it would need to be in a very, 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 very specialized setup for that to happen. If, if it even survives the yeah. trip to the yeah, setup. Yeah, some, some animals just need to stay in the wild. Yeah. yeah. It's very difficult. I know they're very, very cute, but yeah, might not be the best pet. 
at least I think they're cute. Some people okay. are yeah, I'll um, circle it. on the fence of that one. Yeah. Okay, got it. Thanks. Ugly cute. Still cute, <laughs> but ugly cute. <laughs> Is not happy. All right, and then somebody else wanted to know about, oh my gosh, I hope I'm going to say this right, tritium? Tritium. Tritium, levels in the sediments for a comparison with later expeditions um, to obtain if there is, if there's been any effect on marine life. So do we do anything with tritium? All right. In our samples? Still a good zoom. Um, I think I'd like to set up for a collection uh, here. This one? Okay. Yep. Okay. And I want to take a piece of the left side of the colony. Okay. If that helps you orient. Uh, with one of the Ophiroid brittle stars. This has been one primnoid that we've been seeing throughout the dive since pretty much we got on watch. And there's actually three different colonies just in the view here. Um, this is likely in the genus Calyptrophora and uh, it's very difficult to spot uh, species with this, but um, one, I'd like to determine if we already have it in our ge genetic reference library, and two, if we don't, it'll be a useful checklist item for this site uh, as, as so we can confirm ID. But when you're settled, I'll tell you kind of where to aim to cut. Okay. Uh, Um, yeah, I don't know, this, uh, I don't know if this is a very steady place, um, I can, yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. When I knock you off. <laughs> One sec, I'll just try and study it here. Okay. That looks great. And are we doing a uh, we're doing a suction? Uh, probably a snip. Uh, we'll see what we get. Okay. Yeah. Can you turn on downlights? Yes. Downlights are on. I was thinking right here, so we can get, if we cut here and take this piece with the left side that has the brittle star on it, so okay. cut somewhere like that. Um, can you zoom in a bit, video? Yep. And Karen, center it up? Yeah, great, perfect. This is a, this is a primnoid, you said? Right. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it won't be floaty, it'll be very sinky. Excellent. 207, yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Nicely done. Which jar would you like this in? Um, for Rubao Box, actually, Omega. Oh, we're not doing the slurp? No. No. It's a little springy. I don't think it would make it through. Okay. Uh, I'll retract the camera. Mm -hmm. To check it out. All right. So 
So the, I'll type the genus name. Well, uh, it's the genus name is in the chat if you need to copy it. Okay. And Excuse we can me. put a species to it when uh, when it comes up on on deck. Steve, do you happen to have any updates about the wood fall that was collected a few dives ago? Oh yeah, yeah that was a highlight for sure. It's going to be in our cruise summary highlights. Um, we observed a wood fall, which to the best of my knowledge might be the, cer it's certainly the largest wood fall ever discovered um, in the Johnston area. Wow. It was a big log, right? Um, and, uh, and it had loads of biology on it and the interesting thing about wood falls is that they're so um, sparse throughout the oceans that anytime you find a wood fall community every species on there is going to be pretty specialist Steve um, was there anything else on this rock that you wanted to look at Atalanta's like settling out we can hang out here but we might and and just do some fiddling around to get if if Herc starts to get pulled uh, no, uh, okay. I don't have anything else here. We can fiddle or move. Yep. Okay. Um, but yeah, we extracted, I think, six or seven different types of animals uh, from that uh, piece of the woodfall. And that was only a small portion of the woodfall, but these included uh, limpets, um, Amphipods that were specialists to this, the serpulid worms, um, tube tube worms, uh, as well as uh, what else? Two ophiroids that look to be woodfall specialists, um, and a squat lobster that seemed to be a generalist but feeds on woodfalls. ROV, are we ready for a move? Yeah, I'm happy. Very cool. Yeah, I was um, kind of hanging out in the wet lab after that woodfall sample was brought up uh, off the ROV. Meters, two eight zero. It was really, really cool to see that. Like you said, lots and lots of species on that um, little section that was brought up. But the so that was a that was a small portion of the woodfall, right? But then you, how large would you say that the the full woodfall was when it was on the seafloor? Uh, it's probably over a meter, meter yeah. and a half, maybe. Yeah. So it's a pretty big log. It's a very hardwood too. We we have a small piece of it drying in the lab, and uh, it's solid. It's really solid. The limpets that uh, lived on it in, are, are raspers, so they scrape with their radulas the wood and extract energy from the wood fall. Oh, nice. This I think this is the same as the Norella species that we um, sampled very early on in our dive. Uh, in our watch uh, with some anemones on it. And go wide, please. Thank you. And then the uh, tuna kit that was also sampled, uh, I think it was last week. Um, some people are wondering about updates about that one. Say again. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, the tuna kit that was the like the one that was about the size of a football from last week. Do we have any updates about that one? Uh, no. Go for um, some, please. Although uh, we oh. reached out to a specialist. Um, so first off, we're looking at a, a Syrianthurian anemone here. We've collected this multiple times throughout the Pacific remote, remote islands. Um, That's beautiful. Yeah. What's but the yellow? It's not as rare as we thought. Really, really cool. The yellow, uh, it, that looks to be a small uh, bryozoan. Huh. In crustrean or? Um, uh, no, it looks, branchy. it looks, uh, yeah, branchy. So the the tunicate that we sampled a few days ago, um, from the nodule bed, or nugget bed, 
uh, is still unidentified. It, we have a tentative family identification on it, but the family is very broad, encompassing most deep sea uh, tunicate species. Um, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, as these things go, there's only one person in the world that can actually differentiate uh, these particular species. Oh my gosh. And um, and they're quite busy and the, don't have the, the time, so they're going to be, we're going to potentially be reaching out and setting up a special loan uh, from the museum for that particular specimen. But these Could things are, there's just not a lot of people who are either interested or able to identify these collections, and it really requires specialized expertise. Um, there's only that, one yeah. person on Earth who can identify it. Yeah. Wow. Is that ChatGPT? <laughs> <laughs> if ChatGPT can start doing taxonomy, I give up. Is that an isopod on the... It would be extraordinary, but I would give up. What is that on the rock? I'm going to open that grilled cheese shop slash pizza joint. <laughs> <laughs> because my services will be no longer useful. But you know what chat GPT doesn't need? What doesn't what? it need? What does it Grilled cheese and pizza. Mm. Mm. True. It's true. Humans. But humans do. Yeah. Yes. Yes, <laughs> I do. Especially with, with amazing sea names for your sandwiches. Yeah. Evolved melts. Mm -hmm. Evolved yeah, evolved, evolved melts. melts. Evolved milk. Coming so. soon. Gorgonian go Gorgonzola. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that would be tasty or not. <laughs> I know. I'm like, it doesn't sound as good as yeah. I thought it would. <laughs> we'll put that one on the back burner. <laughs> but did, you, uh, did you hear the about the explosion at the cheese factory? <laughs> there was debris everywhere. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Debris. <laughs> so good. It's not a cruise until I hear that one. <laughs> I did just Google evolved belts just to make sure nobody had already opened this sandwich shop. Oh. And it's true, the only results I got were um, geology what? related. Uh huh. Did you type in evolved belt sandwich shop? No. Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't. But I could. <laughs> I'm glad to Go see Duck surface. Frog back in his uh, back in its normal smiling oh. form. <laughs> oh, very tiny Aridogorgia on the right hand side. And then this one here uh, that we're zooming in on now. Um, it's a primnoid. It looks to be a uh, Norella just based on the dichotomous branching pattern and the orientation of the polyps, they appear to be uh, down axis, down downward polarized. And uh, the calling to the left side is probably um, Calyptrophora also angularis, maybe the same one we collected, Good but um, these primnoids, have or given problems in the Three past, but we have uh, lots of capacity at both ashore and uh, here at sea to identify them. Steve, did you know there can be cryptic evolved melts? Ooh. I don't know. I don't know what use that will be to you, but it's another <laughs> adjective. And then you the, could go for yeah. the nightclub version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nightclub version. After hours. For like I go like the crossover with like cryptids. <laughs> the what? You could go for like a crossover with cryptids. Maybe it could be like <laughs> Bigfoot's evolved. Yeah. Like <laughs> Bigfoot's yeah, evolved. Well, the only well, thing that I would think would make this all better is if you also had a barbecue joint attached to it. Oh. Barbecue would, grilled cheese. What and would the barbecue pizza. joint be named? I don't know. Uh, there got to be something in volcanology right. that you can call a barbecue joint. Yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, <laughs> you about to join in, Nick, and become business partners? <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of the version of Earth that was all volcanic? Because there's like Snowball Earth, right? So yeah. There's, there's got to be a name for that Earth. That I, would I, be a great one. I, sure. I, I, I would just, I mean, I think that just is more of like the time period, right? The Arcan. Um, I don't know if it actually had a name. Okay. 
I just Snowball Earth has such a great ring. ring it really to does. It. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, oh, ice really cream shop. Yeah. There we go. I Snowball Earth. <laughs> 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 Chat, we're workshopping this with just you right now. Very on brand. I, I want to use magmatic differentiation <laughs> somewhere, but I, I just can't find a place. I can't find a home for it. Mm. I mean, there's one of the issues is that like this is uh, like Steve's in New York City. Like I feel like this has like a market in like Vegas or North or North <laughs> California oh, or some place sure. where like all the rocks are like right on the surface and there aren't any trees. Sure. We're gonna we're gonna food truck it first and okay. then uh, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. yeah. Business plan. Steve's got a plan. Um, Brick and mortar is not a good place to start. <laughs> yeah, piece. fair. Somebody online is saying cryptic evolved melt equals calzones. Oh, Whoa. man. Oh. Love it. it. This just keeps uh, evolving. Yeah. yeah. Just keeps on giving. I'm looking at a paper right now titled The Productivity of Evolved Melt. It sounds great. There are deep seated melts. There are so many types of melts. Steve, you really stumbled across a gold mine here. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah, thing only yeah. I know about them. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good not to share your ideas with others. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, where I bring my best ideas. <laughs> <laughs> not Vulcan BBQ is coming in. And US Excellent ideas. Happier. Thank you, everybody. Vulcan BBQs, I like that. Vulcan BBQ. What's making the USB go off? So while we still... Uh, it's been really... Yeah, it's been it's getting worse since I sat down over here. It not, misses me. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Um, while we're brainstorming those ideas, we are getting some other questions. So how do we know which uh, samples are okay to take and which are best to leave there? So yeah, how do we determine uh, when to take a sample or leave it. Go for Zoom, please. We have some criteria that um, you know we want to check off before we initiate a sampling, for biology at least. Um, we're interested in uh, species that may be one characteristic of the environment. Um, so if it's you know very abundant at a site, you know it's, it's useful to know its identification, we'll collect it. If it's potentially new or something unrecognizable, um, we'll collect it. If it's um, something that it may be useful for our genetic reference library, we may collect it. Um, if it fills a, a gap, for example, in our phylogenies. Uh, if, we, if it um, has a novel symbiosis or association, um, we may collect it. So for example, the last one had a, a, a brittle star, um, that probably in the Ophiocanthidae. Um, and, and that relationship may be useful to describe as well. Um, there's also some really interesting things that ophiuroids can do to coral polyps, like modify their polarity and how they grow, which uh, can actually influence your taxonomic view of a specimen. Um, but uh, these are the major criteria we use to determine where we want to collect. And then usually if we don't need more than is necessary, we'll collect a small clipping um, and uh, or a few centimeters of tissue. There's a heteropathies species right here on the seafloor right in front some, of please. us. Steve, you could name the barbecue restaurant after a hydrothermal vent system. Oh. Black smoker. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, that nice. is clever. I love that. There you go. Yeah. go Very ahead. nice. Thank I'm you. hungry. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost breakfast time. <laughs> almost. Bridge up. Oh man, we have less than an hour left on oh, our man. Um, on our watch. Uh, we can do the three zero meters, two eight zero, please. They're gonna have to pry me out of this seat. I don't want to go. <laughs> You'll be uh, one sad geologist. One sad geologist. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe the month has flown by so quickly. But um, again, this is the four to eight crew, and the dive is still going to be going on until uh, I believe we're getting off bottom at 11. So there's still more hours in the dive, but just 
in terms of this watch, this is going to be it for us coming up at 8 o'clock. Would a joke make you feel better, Brittany? Maybe. <laughs> I'd be remiss to share this, uh, or if I didn't share this, my dad sent me a great dad joke, so I have to do him, do him proud. Um, what do you call a magician who lost their magic? Mm, what? Ian. <laughs> take, take a second. <laughs> take a bow, Papa. That was great. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> just a moment of silence after we are just computing. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting some uh, <laughs> some some audible text groans from the science <laughs> chat. <laughs> from the science oh, chat. Good, yeah. good, good. They love it. They love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, my mom. My mom sent me this one. Uh, why is the number six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. that, 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 doesn't, that doesn't even deserve a courtesy laugh. That's oh, man. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, that, that's that's harsh. not, not Steve original. Steve's not getting any more biscotti. Should I make it sent to the show? No. <laughs> Zero out of ten. Wow. Whoa. Harsh. Oh, my, oh, my mom goodness. said that joke there. <laughs> <laughs> there's no currently biscotti. I think that predates the joke book. Zero out of ten. Steve's not getting any. All right. You know, there's this two out of ten. Yeah, you actually turned off the audio to get that. You know, there's a there's a common uh, misconception that geologists have poor no sense of humor. Well, no, poor <laughs> interpersonal skills because you know we only date rocks. <laughs> oh. Oh, <okay>. oh no! <laughs> and it's just not true. Thank you. You can't follow it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, can, I can make a this rule. This bathy doesn't look like it has skills. the, the commensal polykeet, so this one is unoccupied. I don't like this. Uh. Interpersonal skills. <laughs> Who needs those? So I'm curious to find between here and waypoint 11, you know, if this is sedimented, if it's noduled, is it sea pens? What's going on here? Um, we rarely have a chance to kind of cover ground across the tops of these sea mounts. So as it starts to moderate a little bit, I'm very curious to see what's going to appear and what's going to disappear. We still had uh, quite a bit of coral um, up until just recently, but it's going to be pretty patchy. Okay, what's the leading cause of dry skin? <laughs> <laughs> Towels. <laughs> Towels? Towels. Oh my goodness. What? I don't oh get it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Uh. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Myself so this is uh, another mm. Calyptrophora angularis <laughs> colony. Go for zoom, please. <laughs> Get us out of here, Bridge. Thank you. <laughs> Three zero meters, two eight zero, please. Mm. All right, I'm back. <laughs> Welcome back. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Very nice. Uh, so we do, you know, we kind of want to maybe stay on the margin between the rocky seafloor and the sediment. Just want to keep an eye out for sea pens because um, we know they're here. Uh, we don't want to go too far into the rocky only part. We've been on the rocks most of the dive. So we can just keep it. You know, one of the eyes out on the sea pens 
keep an eye out for seat pens, that would be helpful. Okay, so I'll just stay like on the border yeah, between the... this is perfect. Okay. Or sediment dwelling sponges, they exist too. Or any animals that are in the sediment for that matter. But it looks like we've lost kind of the nodules. There must be something about this area where the nuggets don't accumulate or maybe they're smothered. Thanks for watching. Nick, any of these rocks looking good to you or? Uh, yeah, they actually are, but I think we're gonna save some space for the next shift. Uh, we were kind of doing a little grab-a-thon there for a second, not knowing what, how much longer the dive would be, but um, I know we want to grab some, some rocks towards the uh, higher end of this dive, so I think we might hold off uh, for that. Can we do a snap zoom in here? I'm not sure what this is. There's something fuzzy yeah. right here on the rock. We don't need to hold it, just quick in and out. Go for zoom. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Looks like a dead sponge rubble. Okay. Okay. Oh, bad. There we go. Okay. I'll fuzzy on the sticks. Okay, so it is go for seven, almost 7.30 here. Um, it's about 30 minutes left of our watch. So again, this is the four to eight crew. We're gonna be switching over in about 30 minutes for the eight to 12 crew to um, come on up and take over for the remainder of the dive for the most part. So if you have any questions or comments that you would like for us specifically, this is the time to get those sent on in. Go ahead, thanks. This is another hyocrinid uh, feather star, or sea lily, rather. There's a little bit more coming up here. I'm seeing, starting to see some potential corals. Nope, actually, they're the same corals. Go for zoom, please. Uh, some kind of uh, a harried sponge that is uh, not doing so great. It may be dead. Oh. Substrate for other animals. Go away, please. Mm. Bridge, no? Uh, three zero meters, two eight zero. This is an interesting hypothetical question coming in. Uh, so if you could keep one deep sea creature as a pet, what would you choose? Aqua Squatch. <laughs> Aqua Squatch. Aqua Squatch. Seafoot. Seafoot, sea that's better. Seafoot. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. There is so, I feel like there is still so many species that we haven't even begun to imagine about 
them existing. So mm -hmm. it's hard to. It would be such high maintenance. It would be so unbelievably uh, frustrating, I would think. <laughs> Pie but, in the sky, yeah. Steve. Yeah. Pie in the sky. Yeah, I don't know. That's a hard question still. For example, well, we, we haven't been able to keep octocorals in the lab alive for more than six to nine months or so. And that's uh, when they're from shallower than a thousand meters. Um, sclerotinians do a little bit better, but it's just, it's very difficult to replicate both the chemistry of the seawater that they live in and um, the current environments that they live in and the pressure environments. It's such a hostile place to uh, the surface dwelling beings. Yeah. Mm. Go vision, please. I don't have any pets anyway, so it's kind of irrelevant to me. But I just like seeing things where they live naturally. Yeah. Very good. I'd probably take a rock. <laughs> <laughs> take a rock <laughs> pet. Can go away. Surprise, surprise. How was the maintenance on those? Yeah. Very, yeah. very low. Mm. Yeah. Put some googly eyes on it. Yep. Nick, did you ever have a pet rock as a little kid? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Who's asking? <laughs> Who's asking? <laughs> His name was Jared, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for a name. It was a very good rock. Yeah. I would, uh, I would definitely have rocks too. I think rocks would make better pets than <laughs> corals, but I would name mine Adrian. Adrian? Yeah, I would need two though. Yeah. I'm waiting. Yeah, I'm waiting. Adrian? He's doing the chessboard thing back here. <laughs> <laughs> 40 He's 40 lining it up. Q smokes deep. 40, 40 chess, yeah. <laughs> Q smokes deep. Well, one, one would be called Rocky and one would be, one would be yeah. called Adrian. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys didn't see that coming by. Uh, uh, no, I did, but I was like, I, wanted, I was waiting. <laughs> Rocky and yeah, Adrian. Rocky and Adrian. Yeah. <laughs> Adrian. <laughs> That's cute. Somebody online said, thank you all for being so amazing and helping the world learn about the oceans. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming along with us on this journey as we're exploring the deep sea. I'm learning a lot too. Yeah, so in this area, we're kind of seeing the same primnoid dominated communities. There's a couple of bamboo corals as well, but you know, I think we've sampled or we know what everything is in this community uh, to species, or we, at least we can tell after the fact when we go back through and look at the data. So it's it's not too unknown to us, and we, that we've taken a couple of eDNA samples should allow us to pretty well characterize what the visible fauna is, and, and hopefully some of the invisible fauna as well. Um, so I'm pretty optimistic about this site. I think it's that's good news. Um, but we'll see what the samples sequence as when we get back, get them back to the lab. Nugget field. Nugget field. All you can eat nuggets. <laughs> yep, I knew we used the scoop too soon. We can also, I mean, maybe on the next watch, Rob might want to take some more nuggets and just throw them in the forward bio box, um, you know, one by one or so. But we'll leave that up to the next watch. These are much, much smaller than anything else we've seen so far. Think so? 
I think they are. The stuff that we scooped was actually. There was one scoop that was, uh, it was, yeah, a, a pretty wide range actually from. Yeah. Bridge now. Just a couple centimeters to maybe over five or six. I have a feeling last year it wasn't straight, as much nuggets uh, or nodules as much as you know shards of crust, you know, broken. Yeah, that's, broken shards of crust. That, that's another interesting thing. When cutting them open, we see a range of things from small rocks, you know, that have basalt matrix to pure glass to uh, some of those hollow glass dice that we were looking at. So it could be anything. Cool. I'll go for zoom. Somebody online has a pet rock named Hudson, so you're not alone, Nick. See? Nice. There are people out there who have pet rocks. Then go away, please. I have a whole collection. You have a whole family? A whole family. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, and then another question came in about um, the coloration of animals at depth. So why are sea jellies and octopus brightly colored when the environment at depth is so dark. Um, so for the most part, we've been seeing some that are pretty much lacking in, pig in pigment or kind of has some dull coloration. But yeah, occasionally we do see some deep sea animals that are a little bit more brightly colored. And why do you think that might be, Steve? Uh, you know, the, the coloration patterns are are not really well understood in the deep sea. It could be related to their evolution and, and the pigments that are expressed by their uh, you know, ancestors uh, through their ancestral lineages. It could be also uh, uh, some sort of chemical product, metabolite that they produce that could have defensive capacities. Um, it could also be um, related to something that they eat perhaps in their diet if it's selective feeding, um, it could also be something related to um, uh, 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 like bioluminescence or, or some sort of pigment related to triggering those types of attractive um, cues for other animals. Go away. Yep. So this is Norella. I believe that this colony we've sampled before on another dive. It's very dense dichotomous branching. So the nodules or nuggets that we're seeing, uh, somebody online wants to know if those could be indicative of waves. Like, would there maybe be waves under the sea that would be causing these uh, nodules to form? It wouldn't be waves, but it, there could be currents involved. Currents, yeah. Yeah. If you look on the left there, you can see a little higher density right off the, the cliff of the rock, so. Could just be a weathering um, mechanism. For the first time, all of our watches, we are currently on top of a waypoint. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Or we were <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> Just for a moment. Not that it makes any difference because they're arbitrary points in space, but <laughs> an exciting uh, milestone. So you guys never drop the target. You guys never drop targets in Nav G3, hey? Uh, we import the waypoints, but we don't drop targets. You don't? Know. Hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
bridge now. Right, can we look here at this long stick? Yes. Three zero Good meters, two eight zero. Okay, this is per, uh, probably per antipathies. I believe we collected this also earlier on in the expedition. No associates from what I can tell. All right. Up and to the left, the, on top of the larger boulder, there's some larger colonies. We can quickly scan over there. Okay. See if there's anything distinctive or new. A lot of these unbranched colonies, I think these are, um, they're all primnoids here. Uh, Candidella gigantea, most of these look like these unbranched uh, colonies, as well as Calyptrophora angularis, and this uh, sparsely branched, uh, oh, this one is a bamboo, though. Oh. Yep. So not, not all unbranched are the same. This is a bamboo coral, polyps okay. on one side. The down current side. Do you ever see these individual colonies uh, latch together in any way? Uh, no, but theoretically, if they are genetically similar enough, they could. Mm. Yeah. And Steve, do you, um, because of that question, Nick, do deep sea corals kind of have the same? They tend to from what I've seen, be more spaced out, but, so I'm guessing less so, but do they have the same kind of turf wars that surface level corals do, where they're kind of fighting with one another? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question, and no, uh, I don't think that's ever been observed, but you know, I would say that if there is any of that, it's probably between you know, parasitic organisms like anemones that might exploit a coral skeleton um, space that's you know, available for colonization and kind of clear clear polyps away from it. Um, so, you know, something like that might be, uh, you know, a type of uh, within phylum warfare, you know, between the, the uh, anemones and the corals. Interesting. Uh, but okay. I would say coral to coral, I think there's very little uh, space, um, yeah, space, uh, what's it called? Partition. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, space partitioning. Although I think naturally, you know, if the corals are settled too closely and the, if the flow conditions don't permit them to acquire enough energy, they will eventually die off until they reach the reach. Sorry, release um, or re until they reach <laughs> um, kind of an equilibrium state where they have enough space between them so that they're not self self parasitizing food. Uh, from their neighbors, mm. even within a whole one population uh, of, of a single species. Wow, self parasitizing yeah. food from their neighbors. That's such an interesting concept. Never thought of parasitism in that way, but yeah, that makes well, sense. I use it loosely. It's not that, that's not in the, the, the ecological terminology for it, but you know. Basically, um, outcompeting your own, you know, neighbor yeah. uh, for food resources, because you think of, you know, corals as a big net, effectively yeah. suspension feeding in the flow. Eventually, someone down current is going to get less particulate matter because, or less uh, food because something up current has already filtered that out. But I, I, don't, I, I don't see um, space competition as as important as in the shallows. Uh, at least out here. I mean, you can see on this rocky ledge we're coming across right now, there looks to be lots of lots, lots of opportune spaces for um, Go zoom, attachment, please. but not every inch of that is covered. So right. there's some there's some finer partitioning going on with which, with, with the, within which colonies and which coral species might appreciate um, certain flow conditions in certain locations. You have to remember the other side of that coin is um, if you're not close enough to one of your members of your own population, you're effectively selected yourself out of 
out of reproducing, um, you know, through uh, broadcast spawning, which is what most of these species do. So we find that there's a lot of patchiness, basically, patchiness in the deep sea. You have a lot of uh, corals in one area, then you have a, you know, a bare space, and then you have a lot of corals in another area, and they probably recruit relatively close to, in, to one another uh, so that they can easily propagate. But not too close Bridge, that they yeah. steal resources from each other. So they find the sweet spot. Three zero meters, yep. two eight zero. It is about balance, but you know, I, I say it every watch almost, we only have a snapshot of how these ecosystems are on the seafloor. As we collect more data, we start to develop some hypotheses, but we still don't have a lot of good time series data about how this environment changes naturally. Um, and so trying to better understand uh, those patterns and processes is really important to being able to effectively conserve some of, some of these habitats from disturbance Go or preserve them for the future. This is a Tritopleura colony, a Tritopleura sponge, rather. With two crinoid uh, feather star associates. Go wide. Thanks. Someone wants to know if we have found the megalodon yet. So no, but we found a megalodon tooth last year, a fossilized one. And it was actually around the same area, around Johnston Atoll. Go for some, please. Nice, another colony of Norella, most likely. Thank you, Lloyd. Thanks. All right. Well, you know what time it is. Coming close to. No. Well, whale time. Last rock Last time. time. Sample. Whale time. You gonna find the whale? No. no. Uh, sorry, Brittany. I'm touched that you're caring more about whales than rocks right now. I'm That's trying. Mm. I'm trying. That means a lot to me. I got a lot of rocks. You didn't get a whale, so. That's true. <laughs> That's okay. I'll be all right. All right. We'll see it on the way home. Yep. Okay. What Go do we have soon? for um, sampling capacity left for the next watch? <laughs> Go for some, please. some rocks and some slurps, basically. Oh, yeah, what's that? Oh, a little anthemastus. Oh. Or oh. pseudoanthemastus, rather. Looks exactly like the pseudoanthemastus we collected earlier in the cruise. Is that a mushroom yeah. coral? Yep. Oh. Yep. Some of the polyps are closed. Thank you. Uh, or rather, the tentacles are closed around the polyp because it might have taken a meal recently. Did we ever get a watch team photo together? Mm -mm. Nope. We just got the back row in our sunglasses okay. at one uh, time. Not yet. Can I do this? Yep. Please do. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> tough. we got to get Bronwyn in there. Tough. Bronwyn, you got to move over yeah, for a second. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wait. A little further. Oh, man. I'll be in the dark. It's OK. <laughs> Your dark corner. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Can Bronwyn move over more? <laughs> Have a, can Bronwyn go between Steve and Nick? <laughs> Bronwyn, can you come between Steve and Nick? Move. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> Yay. Ooh. That kind of worked. <laughs> go for some, please. Four to eight crew. Four to eight crew. 
Good force nine. Good force nine. <laughs> yeah, we never had a team name. I know, I know. we had several. I don't know, sub aerial. Several. I'm sorry, uh, what? I said it. I said what I said. <laughs> sub aerial. <laughs> Always made it through a full watch. Uh. I know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> For old time's sake. <laughs> For old time's sake. Uh, one last. Be on the lookout for Steve's up and coming restaurants. Three zero Only if his science zero. thing doesn't work out, right? Yeah. 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 You have yeah. something to fall back on. Yeah. I still want to be a scientist. <laughs> Someone on the chat says, Bye, y'all. Thanks for a lot of great dives and bad jokes. <laughs> You're welcome. Absolutely. <laughs> Anytime. Better than the other way around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> Can I have one more? <laughs> <laughs> no, save it for just before the watch change. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. Um, Steve's being very stingy with the fun today. <laughs> 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 he has a plan. I'm, he has I'm, a strategy with the I'm sure there's a the shifting stress. baseline in there somewhere. Go through, please. Uh, I feel like chest board <laughs> in his mind. It's uh, it's geology related. If that helps. Uh oh. All right, you can say it. <laughs> um, Call a ficus. Credit to my dad again, but Nick, don't ever let anybody tell you that your pet rock is worthless. I'm sure it has sedimental value. There you go. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Sedimental value. How does the moon cut its hair? Eclipse it. Uh, Eclipse it. Oh. It's cute. It's good. Why did the meteor crash? Because it was tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What? I don't even get that one. Uh, yeah. It crashed. Meteor crashed. Did you say meteor? Yeah. I said gator. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's time, time done the watch. Yeah. We're yeah. almost there. I, I think we're done. What is the final shrimp count? Good question. We haven't really been counting lately, so I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, this totally was a sea apart. cucumber only counting watch and Chanakops counting watch. Okay, so we can squats. give you and squats. Steve, are you gonna give us a farewell dad joke as the watch later? Is there? Nope. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Very stingy with the fun today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, resident dad. Resident dad. <laughs> 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 Not only a PhD, he's also an RD. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm still working on the, uh, yeah, my my degree in that department. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, you got time. Yeah. Uh, someone right, says we stand for the eight crew. Officially entered the the nugget field with the Semperella. We have our characteristic nugget fauna. Oh, there's a fish too. Tiny, tiny one. A little fishy. Do you want a yeah, target out here for a nugget field? Um, no, I don't think it's, I don't think it's very extensive. Right I think it's going to disappear in a, in a few meters. But I am impressed that there's actually as many deep water corals on, like the large fans, like in the distance. Uh, there's a Calyptrophora colony on uh, some like very very small rocks that are in the midst of these channels. Oh, can we back up a second? Can we what? Back it up. Back oh, up. Back sorry. Yeah. Yes. ROV. There was something long and red in the sand. It looks like a shrimp or something. And I don't know what it was. This. What is that? Oh, interesting. Bridge, Go for yeah. Hold position. Oh, sea cucumber. Okay. Oh. Anticlimactic, but we'll toss it over to the 8 to 12. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Yeah, everybody, it's time for us to go ahead and switch on over. Again, thank you very, very, very much for joining us as we're exploring the deep sea. Um, four to eight crew going out, eight to 12 crews coming on. Happy exploring, and we hope that you continue to join us for the rest of our expedition going until December. All right, bye, everybody.
I have a one. Hey. The ship is all stopped now. All right. Well, once they get all settled in back there, we'll ask them what they want to do. Okay, sounds good to me. Gotcha. Yeah. No. We. I think 11:30 because we want to be on deck by one. So depending on the water depth, yeah, we might have to like yeah. Yeah, I'm going to try to do the calculations today. Let me see. <laughs> Um, we point eleven. Yeah, yeah. So let's get the distance from. So currently we are about six thirty-five meters. Oh yeah, we'll get there. Three hours, yeah. two hundred meters an hour. Yeah, I think so. So we're doing usually about point two knots, which is about three eighty meters an hour. So yeah, we'll be, we'll be good. All right, can we start off with a gauge check and a DVL reset, please? Gotcha. Roger. I'm going to hold here for a moment. Hey, back row. Hey, front row. Hey, Morning. side, other side row. <laughs> side, you, side lobes. Side lobes, what do you want to do? Let's just keep on motoring here. We have a nice little ledge coming up in about uh, a couple of hundred meters. Sounds good, we'll try to get there. <coughs> you want us to go turbo speed or regular speed? No, what do you want, want to look at biology, Paola? Yep. I guess okay. it's a silly question. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, we have plenty of time and uh, right. can work way along. Thank you. Of course. Okay, cool. Well, we can start moving ship at uh, point 0.2 knots. Roger. Come on, gang. Okay. Okay. Wait. Bridge. Bridge. Now. Good morning, how are you doing? Yes, can we please um, step 50 meters bearing 280 degrees? Speed is 0.2 knots. Roger. Okay, yeah. Because yeah, it looks like we're going over a field of uh, Pillows and lava tubes. Not sure if it's in place or not, but a place like this in place. Oh, it's lightly covered. A little biology coming up. Can you please just hit the button? Thank you.
I think this this should be part of our sh checklist. I think so too. <laughs> yeah. Maraki, what are we, how are we set for space? We're pretty good for space. Um, I, I can't hear very well. Oh, I said we're pretty good for space in terms of rocks. We could probably get three or four more. Okay. Yeah. All small, medium, large? Mm, medium, two medium and two small. Okay, perfect. Or three small and one medium. Yeah. <laughs> or five small. A <laughs> hundred small rocks. <laughs> Fifty nuggets. Have they scooped already? Yeah, they did. Yep. Great. Yes. <laughs> Great news. But if there's a lot of sediment on top of this ledge. <laughs> Finish that sand. Yeah, what happens? We could get a push core. Could we? Oh. Could we really? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right, everyone. Welcome to the 8 to 12 watch. The last 8 to 12 watch. No. We are currently 2,000, ooh, like exactly 2,200 and 0.9 meters down, um, making our way along an uncharacterized flat top geo in the northern portion of Sculpin Ridge. Um, this may come as a shock to all of you, <gasps> but we're not going to be doing intros. Hmm. Yay. <laughs> we I am shocked. are going to be doing outros <laughs> at the end of our watch. I was Trevor. I was Herc. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're so a new you, man now. <laughs> you have three hours until we hit blue water to think of something to say from the heart. I left mine back in my cabin. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and all you people watching at home, to find out who we are, you have to stay for three hours. Uh -huh. Or who we were. <laughs> or who we were. <laughs> it's like roll credits. I don't know who I am without the intros, though. So this is our last dive. Mm -hmm. We are currently at 2,200 meters. We started the dive at 2,900 meters.